Chief, thanks very much. Let's take a live look now back at the Capitol Hill Occupied Protest Zone, also known as CHOP, which is now in its eighth day. Protesters shut down the streets after Seattle police evacuated its own East Precinct building right near there at 12th and Pine. The city has now brought in concrete traffic dividers. This is new today. It is in an attempt to allow traffic to flow through the area. Again, there's barriers going up within CHOP to allow that traffic and services as well to get through. It is a compromise that protest organizers made with city officials. Come with Patrick Quinn joins us now. And Patrick, what we have to know is how will this change protests within CHOP, if at all? Hey, Michelle, and here are these barriers right here. It's going to allow protesters on one side and traffic on the other side. And right now, as we speak, Fire Chief Harold Scoggins is addressing the city's role in installing these. Let's hear from him right now. So, yeah, <laughs> well, we're going to, we're going to rotate. It's moving, but we're good. So if one of you guys can tell me when we're ready to go, I'll get rolling. I see one thumbs up. Is everyone good? So good afternoon. My name is Harold Scoggins, fire chief of the Seattle Fire Department. Today I'm here with Sam Zimbabwe, the director of Seattle Department of Transportation, and Mami Hara, who's the general manager of Seattle Public Utility. So we're gonna just give you a, a quick brief on the things that took place today and, and what led us there to try to um, transition the landscape. You know, as, as you know, the area has been um, occupied with protesters for about a week now. And during that week, you know, I had significant concerns over fire and life safety with our engines, ladders, medic units, aid cars, our resources getting to where they need to be. If you've seen the area, you knew it would be very challenging. So last Tuesday, all three of us organically, um, without collaboration, actually showed up on the site for different reasons. And, and they'll, they'll talk about that to try to achieve some of these goals um, over the last week. And that was a little bit of the press conference going on as we speak with Fire Chief Harold Scoggins. As he mentioned, he's been out here since last Tuesday negotiating, negotiating with protesters on the next move for the city. And that move is these barriers, as you're seeing, wood on top, concrete on the bottom. Moving forward, the city hopes protesters will stay on one side, and this will allow traffic to get through on the other side here along Pine and along 11th and 12th. This, again, is to ensure that EMS and local drivers can get through now we were here a little bit earlier watching some of these barriers be installed i hope we can show you some of that video it took three four maybe five hours for city crews here on scene to install these barriers seattle utilities was out here along with fire chief scoggins who you just heard from and sdot director sam zimbabwe again this is a compromise between protesters and the city i talked with one organizer of these protests who said while they're conceding some space they are not conceding their message as much as I work in accordance with him wanting to have fire access as well as, e as well as EMS access, I still understand that he is in compliance in accordance with the governing bodies that are here as well as the Seattle Police Department. We will not be allowing for any of that on our end. And Jay told me protesters have forklifts ready to remove these barricades if they end up preventing their ongoing rallies. They plan on soon occupying two blocks behind Cal Anderson Park. And back here live, if you've seen some of the, the pictures from above and even down below of the Black Lives Matter mural that's in Capitol Hill, many of you may be wondering, do the barriers impact that? As you can see, no, no barriers along this stretch. And the city said that was something important to them. They wanted to preserve this space really because there is no necessary need for public access. There aren't any businesses with driveways or anything uh, that needed to have access to them so they could allow this to remain open. It's, it's really the surrounding area that they've blocked up a little bit more. We'll have more on these new barriers, what that means for protests coming up tonight at six. Back to you. Now. It means a lot to try to create a safe space for people. Developing now a battle to find middle ground. Tonight, protesters are blocking newly opened streets in the CHOP just hours after the city reconfigured the landscape. Now it feels like we're sharing it with the same people we're trying to like negotiate with. 
Tonight, a lane that's supposed to allow traffic through the Capitol Hill occupied protest zone is blocked off again. It is indeed, and it comes after the city added some concrete barriers to make room for vehicles and protect free speech at the same time. Como's Tammy Utasa, live on Seattle's Capitol Hill tonight, where this very much, Tammy, all work in progress. Yeah, that's right, Michelle. It seems the negotiating still needs to keep continuing. I want to show you something. So this lane right here is supposed to be open, but you can see over there, protesters have blocked it off with cars and even on the other side, some chairs, and they're actually guarding it, saying regardless of what the city says, they don't feel safe with the lane open. I feel like it's another tactic to try to, like, divide us up. Just hours after 4,000 pound concrete barriers lined the chop zone, opening up one lane of traffic, some protesters have already blocked it off. Still our streets, read one of the messages on the barriers. Protest leader Rooks is questioning the move. The barriers are right now is literally in the middle of the area that we fought for. So is it helping us or are you guys trying to push us out of the area? Fire Chief Harold Scoggin says the barriers are meant to protect protesters in the chop zone from people who may want to drive through crowds. You know, I had significant concerns over fire and life safety. Plus, the barriers open up one lane of traffic around the zone so people who live there can get to their homes, businesses can operate, and emergency vehicles can respond. This now hopefully brings the narrative back to the message and not focus on the space. A space protesters say they won't give up. We went from a whole street to a half a street. Now it feels like we're sharing it with the same people we're trying to like negotiate with. Chief Scoggins has been to the zone every day. I asked him why he felt compelled to go beyond public safety concerns. There's a lot of young people in there and some of them look like me. And the last thing I want to have on my heart as a public safety official is something bad happened in that place for all of those young men and women who are trying to express their First Amendment rights. And back out here live, Chief Scoggins says there is no timeline about when those concrete barriers will be up, but he's open and willing to have a conversation with protesters. Protesters who are blocking this lane say they really want to go back to the drawing board with city leaders. Back to you. Tammy Mutasa live just outside the chop. Thank you, Tammy. Right now, police still trying to find the man who smashed a lobby window at the East Precinct Saturday afternoon. Surveillance video shows the man cutting through a fence and using bolt cutters to break through that lobby window. A still picture here gives a better look at his face. Maybe you know who this man is. Bystanders did eventually step in and move the man away from the building. If you know who he is, contact the Seattle Police Department. New tonight, a group of protesters shutting down part of I-5 as they lined up across the highway here in Seattle. They spent about nine minutes blocking cars before leaving. State Patrol closed the interstate a couple of times as the group started marching throughout the night. They marched from the CHOP down to the SPD's West Precinct. That's where many of the officers from the East Precinct were reassigned. Protesters say they plan to march there every night. In Portland tonight, hundreds of protesters look at this against police brutality marched all across the Fremont Bridge on Interstate 405. We are getting reports that a separate group of protesters are gathering right now outside Portland's Justice Center, a location that has seen protests turn violent in recent weeks. Our rift is widening in the city of Snohomish, where gun-toting vigilantes are being praised as patriots but denounced as racist. It's also leading to demands that the mayor there step down. New at 11, Como's Joel Marino live with the anger and the uncertainty that is now boiling over. Joel. Michelle, those calls for resignations clashed with demands of support for the mayor and other city leaders. This all stems from a night when armed citizens crowded downtown Snohomish for a threat that may have been a hoax. Snohomish City Hall remains shuttered because of the pandemic, but that didn't stop a heated debate about what residents think is wrong and right with the city. Gun-toting militia plus fear plus hate plus misinformation does not equal safety. We appreciated the quick response of the patriots who voluntarily came to protect our people's streets and businesses. The virtual city council meeting included more than three hours of public comment, all focused on the fallout from May 31st when armed citizens occupied the historic district and vowed to protect the shops from a leftist threat that never showed up. Some of those toting guns were also seen drinking alcohol. What if 500 Antifa rioters showed up to burn down the town 
as threatened and we weren't there. Your actions and some of your inactions have emboldened racists in our town. Many decried the armed citizens as bigots, pointing to the presence of a Confederate flag at the gathering, though some defended it. We saw one Confederate flag, which to many is simply a symbol of Southern pride. The police chief has already been reassigned, and while a few spoke in support of Mayor John Kartak, others are demanding that he step down. You have failed me as a mayor. You are a disgrace, and you need to go. Uh, despite the calls for the mayor's resignation so far, there's been no organized effort to launch a recall campaign. Back to you. New tonight, dozens of people in Sammamish gathered to protest against racial injustice. The groups lined the streets in front of City Hall where speakers also addressed the crowd. Looking live over Elliott Bay tonight, this Friday, longshore workers plan to halt work here at the Port of Seattle and then ports along the entire West Coast to observe Juneteenth. June 19th commemorates the end of slavery in 1865. Members of the Longshore and Warehouse Union plan to stop work Friday morning and host a rally at Terminal 46 to call for an end to police brutality and racism. U.S. bank branches shutting down early on Friday in recognition of Juneteenth. The CEO said it's important for workers to educate themselves or serve in the community. Branches close at 1 p.m. Online and mobile banking will still be available. Going live to the nation's capital now and the White House as demonstrations continue all across the country. President Trump says he is committed to working with Congress on new police reforms and that's beyond the executive order announced today. The president's order recommends restricting chokeholds unless an officer life is in danger, but it's not a mandatory ban. It also calls for a national police misconduct database to prevent officers with bad records from moving between departments. And it encourages programs that send social workers with police on nonviolent calls involving mental health, addiction, and homelessness.